Today is the day I'm going to show you my bus. Can you tell I just got a fisheye lens? The day has come. I'm going to show you my bus just like I said I was going to. I just hope you're going to cut me some slack because, you know, people don't usually show off until there's something to show off. I guess these kind of projects are never really done, you know? You just sort of evolve to a point where you're comfortable showing it to people, and I have just not evolved to that point. I feel like it's like having a baby showing the bus to all these people all at one time like this. No offense to people who've actually had babies, I hear that's really painful. So are you ready to see this bus? Okay then. Okay, that's the tour. It's over. You've seen it. Bye. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You should have seen your face. Oh, no, I can't really see your face. Don't worry. So this is what I would call, I guess anybody would call the cockpit because it's where the pilot sits. I'm the pilot. Pretty much the first thing I did after the seats were out of the bus is I hung up all these pictures. You know, my first priority was really color. They just had to have a lot of color, but I'm kind of drawn to religious iconography as you can see from everything that's up there. I also really like folk art, like folk art landscapes, pictures of barns, that kind of thing. I really love this angel because it was a gift from my friend Ariel when I opened my store and I figure since the bus is my store now it definitely belongs in the bus. Also, who doesn't love lemons? Now, you probably noticed when we came in, the chandelier. Yes, it's a chandelier, but I've taken out all of the electrical parts and I'm going to redo it with battery operated LED, but I haven't gotten around to that yet. It's held up there by a magnet and I take it down when I start driving. Don't wanna get crushed by that thing. If you wanna do like I did and put up a bunch of artwork and maybe some other interesting things or maybe even a chandelier, you have to make sure you're using things that you're okay with putting a screw into because you have to screw everything down. Seriously, if it's not screwed down, it could kill you. Just imagine that you're driving along like a bumpy BLM dirt road and pfft, do you wanna get impaled by a flying wooden angel? Explain that one to your mother. She already thinks you're crazy for driving around in an old school bus. Oh wait, that's my mother. <laughs> this is the controller for the heater, which you saw in the diesel heater episode. If you didn't see that, go back and watch it because it was fun. This is a little cabinet that I made just to tuck in here. The words on it are from Oh, The Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. It really fits to the nomadic life, but also it's just really cool and I just made that by typing it on my computer in a bunch of different fonts printing it out and then decoupaging it right on there. You'll notice there are several sets of curtains in here besides the obvious decor use they're also used to create areas of privacy and also of warmth. On a cold night I would use these curtains to separate the front because the duct from the heater which is under the seat runs out the back of the seat and the curtain goes over it so the duct is actually going underneath sending all the heat into the back. If I close off the front most of the draft is in the front so I get way less draft if I do that. So now let's move on to the armoire. You'll notice as we go through here that all the furniture is in kind of various stages of disrepair and that's kind of one of the ways that I can afford the furniture that's in here because I really have no money. One of the advantages to being a vintage seller is that I'm also a great vintage buyer. This armoire was $24. This fabric is a vintage bedspread and I just cut it up. I put this panel in, I made some curtains out of it, and I upholstered a cushion with it that you'll see in the back. So we've got this theme running through the bus. There's a drawer at the bottom. And there's clothes that hang in here, and then over here you'll see there's a small wooden dolly that hangs on the wall. 
And then there's my dustpan. Fancy, huh? And then there's a random assortment of stuff over here. And then down here, this big jug full of liquid, that's actually kerosene or lamp oil, which is what I burn in my perfection heater if I'm using that, which is really for extreme cold. And also I cook with it. So I'll show you my cook stove shortly. Back here, behind here, are bookshelves. And when I was looking for a way to keep the books from falling off the shelves, I thought, well, what if I got something to put on front of them that also had storage that would give me extra storage? So I got this little hanging pocket system. It's like for an office. This right here, these are some of my favorite discoveries. There's um, quite a number of sizes, but these are basically like rubber twist ties. They probably sell them on Amazon, so I'm sure I'll be able to put a link to them. But they're rubber twist ties. They come in a bunch of different sizes. This is one of the larger ones. And this unhooks if I want to get to the stuff behind it, but I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want this tour to be an hour long considering that it only takes 30 seconds to walk through the whole place. This is the perfection heater that I was mentioning. When it's lit, it's absolutely gorgeous. I don't really use the perfection heater that much indoors because it has to be super, super cold, but it's great for when you're camping. You can just pick it up by the handle and carry it outside. It's actually better than a campfire. Since this is my daily driver, pretty much almost all the time, this remains bungeed back here. So these metal sheets eventually are going to be part of the metal sidewall that I'm making to uh, keep heat away from the wood of the armoire. There'll be a sheet of much thicker steel behind them and then a one inch um, spacer to keep the metal off of the wood. I need to be able to get inside there to light the wick. So I made this slide out. This is basically just a piece of plywood with a handle attached. And then I added uh, a slide rail, which is just um, a cut down piece from a drawer slide. And I just attached that to the armoire. And then this just slides out. So once it comes out, then I can open this up so that I can get in there and light the wick, see? And then I can slide it back. Also, this is a storage space back here that's big enough for a rollerboard suitcase, and I will eventually put my out-of-season clothes in there, but I can't consider anything out-of-season right now because we're kind of in that weird period where it could be winter again tomorrow. If you saw my toilet episode, you know what's in here, but in case you didn't see my toilet episode, I'll show you. This is where my toilet lives. And I'm not going to roll it out for you because you got to watch that episode if you want to see more about it. This right here is one of my favorite things in the whole world. This is a possum belly table. 200 years old, riding around in a school bus in the 20 teens, soon to be 2020. For a lot of antique lovers, it's kind of a sacrilege that I put these brackets right into the top of this table that was made in the 1820s. And I feel you, but number one the table was pretty trashed when i got it so i just feel like me giving it a new life riding around in a school bus 200 years later i get points for that number two everything's got to be screwed down furniture screwed down in four places that's the way it works around here not something i want to get hit with them's the rules i didn't make them laws of physics like everything in here, it needs some work. I'm probably going to refinish this top and I'm definitely going to fill these gaps, but I'm not quite sure about the refinishing because let me just put it this way. I like my antiques to look old. These drawers down here, which are metal and curved, would have held flour and things like that. Underneath here, this is one of my water jugs. If you watched the episode last week where we put in the sink, you know that I carry 12 gallons of water and that's one of them. This crate I've had since I was a teenager and basically I just toss stuff in here that I'm using in the build for the most part. Here's a goofy little lamp. I mean, the lamp isn't goofy. The lamp is a lovely miniaturized tea tin lamp, but I've made this goofy lampshade for it, but I like it. I like to combine really rustic things with sort of fancier things. And this lamp is kind of a good marriage of that for me. I like wooden shoes from Holland, especially these decorative painted ones are super appealing to me. I can't tell you why, they just are things just appeal. What can I say? And here I've got this collection of what they call swap cards. They're basically playing cards. Most of them don't have anything on the back. They're just the decorative side of the playing card. And I just like them because they're so colorful and because I really like this light string with the clips on it and I needed to clip something to it. I sell these 
And um, these are ones that I just decided to hang up. I mean, I would sell them if the opportunity arose, but they're pretty and they add a lot of color. Let's talk about the cabinets a little bit. The bottom row of cabinets are basically fruit crates. They are, they came to me already painted white because a friend of mine was doing a demo on a house that had built these into a bookcase and he didn't even know they were fruit crates until he took them down and they actually have fruit crate labels on the end which you can't see from these but you can see from the ones on the other side but I decided to put fruit labels on the front mostly these cabinets contain uh, stuff that I'm selling if you come up to the top cabinet basically I made these just like I did the one in the front in the last video I think I told you that I didn't even know what a jigsaw was when I got this bus and I sure didn't know how to cut anything curved but now I made these cabinets it just got to the point where I really needed cabinets and I didn't know how else to get them I tried all kinds of ways to buy things that would fit in there and nothing fits in there so I bought a jigsaw I made a cardboard template of every curve Every cabinet has a different curve because that's how buses are. If you think you're going to use a level in a school bus, no. That level is going to become a paperweight. So I cut my curved pieces out of plywood and then I made the fronts out of underlayment, which was the cheapest material I could find. If I had it to do over, I probably wouldn't use underlayment because I decoupaged on them and when I put the Mod Podge on, they kind of curled a little bit, which made them a little tougher to use as doors. You want to know why there's fringe on the bottom of all the cabinets? because my cuts are so uneven I had to cover them up somehow. They're jacked, but they're done. I love large group portraits are my favorite, but any kind of group portrait. This is a smaller version of the, the rubber twist tie that I showed you before. And you'll notice there's hooks on the ceiling. These are magnets up above each one and that's to hold the door open when I wanna look inside. Most of the upper cabinets contain stuff that I use either for crafts or for building or whatever. These happen to have restore finish and paint and stuff like that. And I use these baskets because things get really tossed around in there. And so the baskets just kind of keep everything from creating chaos, which I learned the hard way. And then here comes the bed. This is my Murphy bed. This is how it looks when it's closed. I'm not going to show you the bed right now because doing night mode, this video would be way too long. So I'm going to do the night mode for the bus on a whole different video. That's one way to get you to watch twice. Well, assuming you like this one, that is. I actually am working out a system right now where I can fill the shelves up and then have the stuff stay on there at night. I haven't quite figured it out, but I've got some ideas. If you have any ideas, you can always put them in the comments. Now, remember I told you that I have a tendency to make too many holes. Yeah, there's one right there that I made that I shouldn't have made. Up on the top, uh, those are camp chairs that are just folded up and tucked in there behind a copper rail. It's basically just a copper pipe with uh, a bungee through it that's attached around brackets at the ends and held on with, again, a rubber twist tie. Now you'll also see there's some shoes up there, but the shoes mainly are going to be going on top of the armoire up there, but I haven't got another copper pipe right now, so I haven't rigged that up quite yet. Behind here is a little closet. And in this closet I've got, these are the side panels, and this is the actual canopy that I use for swap meets. This is the roof of the canopy. Um, I don't always keep it so nice and neat and wrapped up, but uh, it's a new roof, so I haven't put it on yet. That's why it looks like that. And then this is a smaller canopy that I also use. And there's a window back there, and I'm probably going to punch that window out and put a box in it to store something. I haven't quite figured out what. It might be where my propane goes, but I haven't really decided quite yet on that. So that's what I call the back closet. Eventually this may be where my solar lives because I don't have solar put in yet. I told you I like group portraits, but I especially like this one because my gampy's in it. That's my dad's dad. He passed away when I was like seven. It's hard to remember what he looked like and there was a lot of people in this picture. So I think I know who he is, but I'm not really sure. I like to keep the path clear from the front of the bus all the way through the back. I've got a little set of folding stairs that go outside the back door and you can just walk all the way straight through. I love that. It feels really open and then it also gives me one extra window. This here is a Victorian traveling confessional. A priest would have brought this to your house. It's made of oak. It used to have a crucifix on top, but it came off. This wallpaper here is a stick-on. The pattern is called Marrakesh. 
For the side door, the big locking mechanism was disabled when I got the bus and I actually use this door a lot when I'm doing vintage shows. Sometimes I'll set up a display in it or else I'll just use it for unloading. But when I got it, there was just this little pin down by the floor. That was the only way to lock the door. And one day it just blew open while I was driving. So I added this handle and also this big barrel bolt up here, which makes it much easier to lock. Oh, it's so delightful lounging on my sofa. Well, it's not really a sofa. It's actually a glider with some pillows on it, but it's what I got. I love gliders because I just find them really relaxing. It's really lightweight, so when the bed comes out at night, I just carry this to the front stairs. I put the pillows on the bed, and then this goes on end in the stairwell. It acts as kind of an extra security device because you really can't get in with this in the stairway. The pillows on the glider are left over from my store. I used to sell a lot of pillows at my store and this throw here is basically a piece of fabric I got from a merchant that was selling African textiles at a street fair. Now you probably recognize the cushion. It's the same fabric that you saw on the armoire and my curtains that I hang over the windows at night are made from the same fabric. Now this upholstery, if you want to call it that, is put together with hot glue because I don't know how to sew. What can I say? I'm not a domestic goddess. It's another thing I've done that's jacked but done. Hey, I guess that's how I roll. Now if you look up, you'll see that all the curtains hang on copper railing. And you see that this copper railing goes all the way around. This is another piece that I picked up at a street fair. I have no idea what its origin is, but it's got these sparkly little stars on it. You remember this sink. You helped me put it in just last week. I had said that I needed a shut off to make sure that I wasn't didn't have water running all over the place while I was driving, but I actually discovered, you know, this handle actually is the shut off. If this faucet isn't open, the water's not coming out. And I just, again, used one of these twist ties to hold it. But I can take it off and I can step on the pedal, which again, you helped me install. And there's water and it's going down the drain. There you go. In case you're wondering, I was able to fix the leak from the plumbing that we put in last week. So yeah, I'll probably explain that in a future episode, but I don't want to take time with that right now because we still got a lot more to get through. I don't really like to cook, so I don't cook that often, but when I do cook, I want to cook on something cute. And this stove is cute. This down here, you fill this with kerosene and then there's a wick that comes up through here and then your pot goes here and that's how you cook with it. It's not the most practical thing in the world because this is just a reservoir. You know, you just pour the kerosene in. There's nothing really to hold it in. So I actually have a plastic cover that came off of like a margarine tin that I put on this when I stow it and I take this piece off. This piece contains the wick. So I have a separate, like a sort of a bag that the wick goes in. It makes me so happy to cook on this. I got it on eBay. I can't even remember what I paid for it, but whatever I paid, it was worth every penny because it's cute. Let me tell you about my soldier boy. So I have a few of these, which are Cracker Jack prizes from the fifties. And I like them because there's a couple of them that fit into the locks and hold the locks tight. I had to cut off his foot to make it fit, but you know, war is hell, so he's okay with it. If you saw the toilet episode, you'll recognize that this is one of the curtains that comes down so that you can poop in privacy. This one you'll see has another little Cracker Jack toy. These are these weird Swiss fantasy cards that feature root vegetables in strange situations. This one is some root vegetables getting married. Isn't that nice? Now this is a great big old antique dresser and the way I keep the drawers shut uh, is with yardsticks when I'm traveling. They don't really open anyway, but the yardsticks prevent them from really being able to open. And I've got in here the top drawer on this side. This is all hardware, screws and bolts and stuff. Um, I probably won't travel with all that much hardware once the bus is completed, but right now where I'm still building, I'm using a lot of hardware. And on this side, 
this drawer is where I keep random other stuff. I try as much as possible to use little boxes to keep things separate because again, the bus gets a lot of jostling and things move around a lot. And so I try to, you know, keep it as neat as I can, keep things from flying around. And this dresser is super solid, super strong, and it's just awesome. This crate just kind of acts as a catch-all. This bus is my only vehicle, so if I have to go to the grocery store or Home Depot or someplace just sort of suddenly, chances are there's going to be something laying around on the countertop, and this box is where I stash it. I just take anything that's floating around and throw it in this box. That way I know it's not going to come flying and hit me in the head. Ideally, I wouldn't have anything laying around that had to go in the box. Yeah, ideally. How often does ideal happen in your life? This is a little cabinet that came off of a sailboat. I call it my cupboard. And as you can see, the cupboard is pretty much bare right now, but this is where my food lives. And I added this little window latch onto it. And that just, the first cabinet kind of rests on top of that. And then the other ones are on that same type of board and bracket that the other side had. So that's my bus. I know it's not for everybody, but it's for me. I don't know what I was so worried about. I'm glad I showed it to you now. I'm kind of proud of it, actually. This was a lot of work. I think you probably understand a little better why it's called Maximalist Minibus. I'm not going to go into maximalist design and all that stuff right now. This video is long enough as it is, but I will say that the credo is more is more, and that doesn't mean more stuff. It means more color, more texture, more pattern, more layers, more to look at, more, just more, more interesting. At least that's what I think. What do you think about maximalism? Let me know in the comments. This is the part where I'm supposed to say subscribe, comment, like. So subscribe, comment, like, all that stuff. I'm kind of worn out, so I can't give it my all and come up with some goofball thing to do at the end like I usually do, but... You know what to do. Hit the red button. Hit the little bell. Do all the things you're supposed to do. And next week, if you're good, I will show you part two, which is the bus at night. It's a very different place at night. I might even use the word enchanted. Come see my enchanted bus next week on Maximalist Minibus. Zip right there. What do you think? You like that? Oh, 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 my darling. I know the sun is.